Please join in singing our opening song. The words will be on the screen. Good morning, everyone. Good afternoon. Good evening. If you've had a long day like me, it might just blur all into one. I am so excited to be here with you tonight. We are about to embark on a really beautiful journey. Um, If you were able to attend the daily Mass, uh, Father Bob kicked it off in our Mass and just talked about what a blessed time we're going to enter into. And I don't even think we realize it yet what St. Joseph has in store for us. And not just St. Joseph, the Holy Family, Mother Mary, all the angels and saints who are gonna be interceding before the throne of God on our behalf. Um, We're living in this time of crazy things in the world, but we're in a time of grace, this year dedicated to St. Joseph that started December 8th and will end this December 8th. This is the last consecration opportunity in this year dedicated to St. Joseph. There is no chance that's random that you are here. God called you to be here, and God called you online to be listening with us today. Um, All things are providential. There are mighty blessings in store for you. And I am so excited to be a part of this with you to help you lead, um, to help lead you through this 33 day um, preparation for our consecration. Um, Most of you probably seen the informational meeting video or actually were here last week. So you knew a little bit about my story, and Father Cam shared a little bit about his story, and we shared a little bit about Father Donald Calloway, who wrote the uh, 33-day consecration book that we'll be using. But what I want to I want to do for you right now is just tell you how God just did a grace in my life. You you heard a little bit of my story, but I had my worst PET scan in six years, and just a little bit ago. I mean, it was less than a month ago. My tumor size has doubled over the last 90 days. But the very day after I got that heartbreaking news, Pat um, had everything at our church. She really runs almost everything. But the main one in our office asked me if I would assist Father Cam in running this consecration. And I can't tell you what a blessing that's been in my life. Instead of focusing on getting ready to die, possibly, or whatever, I am focusing on the land of the living and the souls that are sitting in front of me and the ones that are watching online right now. We are going to be embarking on a crazy journey, and I am honored to be leading you on that journey. Um, as we briefly start out today, I'm going to tell you a little bit more about my story. Um, it's going to relate. You'll see it's a little roundabout way, but you're going to really see how it's going to relate to you in this journey of this consecration. Um, in the readings tonight at Mass, it talked about the harvest is plentiful, but the harvesters are few. And sometimes it's because we don't even know how to harvest. We, we don't know how to really evangelize. We don't know how to invite people. But I can tell you, Jesus just said, come follow me. And it's a pretty good line. We can say that to anybody. Come follow me. Let's just try this 33-day consecration. 
I've invited a lot of friends and family all across the United States to join us online, as well as people here. I've invited my next door neighbor across the street, my other one across the street. It doesn't matter if someone's Catholic, Protestant, or just, you know, loves the earth. Jesus is for everyone. God is our creator, and we are his creatures, and we are meant to love him and follow him. This consecration is going to do exactly that for us. As I talked to some of my friends, though, about um, this consecration, and they ordered their books and they received them, they said, Sharni, you know, I'm looking through it, and I don't, I don't really know what a consecration means. There's a lot of talk about saints. I don't really understand the saints. This seems like it's way too advanced for me. Am I going to do all right in it? Or, or some of my friends would say that, you know, I've already started this before several times, but each time I just drop off. Well, I want to encourage you today not to drop off. If you make this commitment, the hardest thing is today, day one. Even if you're getting a workout program or anything, the hardest thing is making the commitment and your day one. After that, you just ride it through. In the end, it will be a breeze. And in the beginning of any journey, you might not understand a lot of things. It's exposure. You're being exposed to a lot of saints. Maybe you've never heard of them before. That's okay. We're going to have all eternity to get to know them once we're in heaven. But you're getting exposed to the saints who've wrote about St. Joseph, who grew in close devotion to him. Um, so don't get concerned about that at all. I want to bring up the first picture, if I can, Steve, that says, um, let's see if it pops up there. I did not understand him, St. Joseph, well enough, but that will change. And St. John of the Cross said that. This picture is actually text to me by a parishioner that's um, a friend that's going to do this consecration. And she said, you know, I don't understand a lot, but I circled this and wrote, Amen. Because that's where we're headed. We're going to understand him more. And so it's okay if you don't understand right now the, co the concept of the consecration, really, or even a lot of the saints, even on our first reading today. Um, if you can bring up the second picture. My first consecration I did was to the Sacred Heart of Jesus. And it was about six years ago. Like Father Bob preached today in his homily, when you really start growing in your devotion, you will encounter struggles. But they will test your faith. They will test your perseverance. And if you get better, not bitter, you will grow tremendously in your faith. So at this point, my son was just little, but I was about to embark on my cancer journey. He was only nine months old when I got diagnosed with cancer. And um, this picture was us preparing for our, um, well, actually the day that we consecrated ourselves to the Sacred Heart of Jesus. The next slide, our parish priest, I lived in Montana at that time, came to our home and blessed our home and he loved cheesecake, so I made a special cake to celebrate our consecration that says on there it was September 4th, and we consecrated our whole family to the Sacred Heart of Jesus. That's when I first started learning about consecrations, really was growing in my faith about all the lives of the saints. And it was, it was just tremendously preparing me, God knew what he was doing, for what was to come. I didn't know what was to come. Um, if you can show the next slide. This next one just shows... Um, the day after I got a double mastectomy. So they told me to do it on like August 27th or something, but I said, no way. My son um, has his birthday on August 28th. I want to have a whole body, and then the next day you can send me into surgery. But this was just right after it. I climbed out of the hospital bed, and my husband brought him in there, and I was feeding him. But God was preparing my heart. He, I've given myself to the Sacred Heart of Jesus to do with me what he wants, to suffer if it's going to help for the salvation of souls, just to grow, you know, in perseverance, whatever God wanted. Um, the next slide is at my first chemo session. And my husband was switching from um, the missile field in the Air Force to becoming a pilot. And so he was there for that, but he was gone for the whole year of my cancer treatment. All the um, chemo, all the radiation, everything, he wasn't there. But he was there that first day, they, then he was off to Texas. But um, here shows our little family before I lost all my hair and everything just getting started. Well, shortly after that, um, I had a terrible thing happen to me. My, when you're taking chemo, your, your white blood cells drop terribly low. And anything can kind of take you out. You're very susceptible to any troubles. So I actually just had a little tiny ingrown hair on my bum. And it got bad because I had no white blood cells to fight it. It got swollen, swollen. Pretty soon my legs were streaking and my body was streaking. I took a picture, sent it to a nurse. She's like, get to the ER right now. My husband was gone. I took my little son with me, my baby, to the ER. 
And they're like, get a mask on her right away. She can't be exposed to any germs. Get her into a room right away. We've got to get her on IV antibiotics. This is critical. You could go septic. You could lose your life. Your organs could start, start shutting down. And I thought, dear Lord, I was prepared to die mentally at this point. But I thought it was going to be a long, agonizing cancer death. But I was not prepared to die right now. Lord, you haven't prepared me for that. And so I sat there and um, thought, OK, let's just start doing some praying. Let's start doing some more surrendering. And the doctors asked me to sign papers like, do you want to sign? Do you want to be revived? Well, well, if I'll still be capable of helping my family revive me, if, if there's not going to be brain, just don't revive me. Like, I don't know what I want to say. My husband's not even here. He's in Texas. Lord, help me get through this situation. So we called the parish priest. Um, he wasn't home. So we called another priest. And so he was rushing over to um, get me the anointing of the sick at the ER. My sister, who lived in town, I had her come to the ER as fast as I could and um, so she could watch my son. So Father David Wilkins was there to give me an anointing of the sick, and um, he was going through the anointing like I'd had several already, so I knew the experience, but out once, I said, I stopped him in his prayers. I said, do you guys smell that? And they looked at me like I was crazy. My sister was in there, don't, don't you smell that? And they just kept looking at me like it was crazy. I'm like, you guys, underneath my mask, it's like someone shoved a whole bouquet of flowers up my mask. My mask is so strong of flowers. Like, is your oil smell like flowers? Like, what is going on? And they all just looked at me like, well, she's lost it. But let's continue on with the consecration. So we continue on with the consecration. And um, I, I didn't know what happened, but we finished it. Um, Later that evening, the, my parish priest got word of me being in the ER with the situation came on. There's Father Ryan Erlenbush. And he came and did a blessing with me, prayed with me. That evening, as I contemplated dying if the, um, the IV antibiotics didn't work, I thought, what do I tell my husband? What do I give him as my final words and wishes for my son, who's just a tiny baby, he's like nine months old? How do I put it into words really fast? Because if I were to die or go unconscious, I want something to be left there for him. So I took out my cell phone in the hospital, and I started typing as fast as I could type into my cell phone. I pulled this up today. You're going to see how this all relates in a bit here. But I'm going to read it to you, because I want all of you to think about, at some point, we're all going to be there. I've been lucky enough to be warned over six years of a cancer battle, but we're all going to be there. We're all going to be heading to meet our maker at some point, and how are we ready? So I wrote to my husband, if anything were to happen and I left to go to the Lord, know that I will be interceding from heaven for you, Marcellus, and all of our family and friends. Tonight, when Father David gave me the anointing of the sick, I had a strong scent of flowers, like there was a whole bouquet of flowers under my breathing mask. It was a very strong smell, and I didn't imagine it. Father Ryan came and blessed me, and we talked for a couple of hours. My sister left at 1 p.m. to go stay with Marcellus. I want you to know that I trust you with your decision making, with your career, and with the upbringing of Marcellus. Always pray first and let the Holy Spirit guide you in any decisions. You're a great father, and I am confident that you would do a great job of raising Marcellus. Always remember his godparents are there to support you with him. Never leave your faith. Raise Marcellus to be holy. Always pray to stay strong in your faith and be consistent and persistent with your prayers. I love you very much. Always remind Marcellus that I love him with my whole heart and that I cannot wait to be with him in heaven. If anyone were to have hurt feelings over something they did or didn't do to me, let them know anything and everything has been forgiven and that I love all. I don't want this message to scare you, but instead comfort you if anything were to happen to me. I'm going to say my prayers and then I'm going to try to rest. I love you with all my heart. May God bless you and protect you always. Always know that I am wearing my scapular and that I know that Mother Mary is interceding for me right now. Trust her, Jordan, and teach Marcellus to trust her intercession as well. Also remember to ask for intercession from St. Joseph in your role of fatherhood. I love you with all my heart. Remember, we were praying for redemptive suffering for the salvation of souls. This is God truly answering our prayers. My husband replied back from his Air Force school in Texas. 
Sharna, you've changed me forever and brought me to my Catholic faith. I'll be forever changed for the better because of you. If God were to take you, I will always remember your strong, reassuring, and godly voice. You gave me my firstborn son, and I will always reassure him of how much you love him, how much God loves him, and the great woman his mom was. I will love you with an everlasting love and will long to see you in eternity. Take hold strongly to your faith and run to Jesus if your body begins to fail you. I will make decisions honoring your best wishes and intentions and always honoring God in our Catholic faith. And to the best of my ability, it will be okay in this life and the next. Jesus, please take care of my wife. I hope that can put you in a position just to think for a moment what it might be for all of us one day. But in heaven, we have the maternal care of Mother Mary, we have the paternal care of Saint Joseph, and we have 2,000 years of angels and saints interceding before the throne of God. I made it through the night. I was fine. The IVs worked. They got the infection under control. I went home the next day. I picked up my prayer books. And I realized that I was on day five of a novena to St. Therese of Lisieux. I didn't know anything about the saints. But when I picked up my book and I read that day five, I pulled it up so I can read it for you today. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. Dear St. Therese of Lisieux, you said that you would spend your time in heaven doing good on earth. Your trust in God was complete. Pray that he may increase my trust in his goodness and mercy as I ask for the following petitions. Pray for me that I, like you, may have great and innocent confidence in the loving promise of our God. Pray that I may live my life in union with God's plan for me and one day see the face of God whom you loved so deeply. St. Therese, you were faithful to God even unto the moment of your death. Pray for me that I may be faithful to our loving God. May my life bring peace and love to the world through faithful endurance in love for God, our Savior. Loving God, you gave St. Therese the gift of forgiving others when she felt hurt and betrayed. Help me to be able to forgive others who've wounded me deeply. I tried to forgive, Lord. Help me to forgive 70 times, seven times. I am humble, Lord. Give me more humility. I see you, Lord. Help me to see you more. I trust you, Lord. Help me to trust you more. I love you, Lord. Help me to love you more. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. So if you're just learning about the lives of the saints, my story still might not make sense to you. But if you know St. Therese of Lisieux, her other name was St. Therese of the Little Flower. St. Therese promised to show up to people, interceding before the throne of God, and bring them roses. I didn't know this, because I was just learning about the lives of the saints and the intercessions of the saints before the throne of God. But I thought, oh my, as I read this, I'm going to look her up. So I looked up St. Therese, and guess what? Her mom died of breast cancer when she was just four years old. And there I was with breast cancer and a little tiny child. Louis and Zelie Martin, her parents, who are also saints, and um, their feast days on their wedding day, because actually their vocation of um, marriage life was what made them become saints, I'm sure were interceding before the throne of God as I was praying for um, that divina to St. Therese. None of it made sense to me until I looked at it backwards. But the lives of the saints are powerful. We're called to be saints. And what we're doing in this consecration is uniting ourselves to St. Joseph, the greatest saint. We know that Mary is a great saint, but she's in a category of her own because she was immaculately conceived. We will have the powerful intercession of the Father, the earthly Father, 
of Jesus interceding before the throne of God as we consecrate ourselves to him. And as you go through this consecration, these 33 days, you will be reading about a lot of different saints. I think today it talked about St. Maximilian Colby, different saints. If it's confusing, that's okay. Just read along and trust that your 33 days are going to take you exactly where you need to be at the time you need to be. And some of it probably won't even make sense until the backside of it. And you will see how it's working for your favor. What's also most fitting about this story that I'm telling you tonight is that today is September 30th. St. Therese of Lisieux died on a Thursday, September 30th, 124 years ago, about this same time that we're exactly at. She ended her earthly life, but she began her eternal life in heaven. And that's my prayer for all of us as we go in this consecration, that we would draw so close to Jesus through St. Joseph and all the angels and saints that someday we will live in eternity with them forever. So with that, I'm going to move on to the next part of our meeting today. Um, Father Donald Calloway has a bunch of videos. If you're going through the book and you feel like it's a little bit much, you can watch. If you have the time at home, there's a 45-minute Hi, everyone. Minute I'm Father Donald day, Calloway, um, the vocation director. Meditation or talk that he gives on each of the 33 days. And we're going to have that linked into our website, so anybody that has the time can um, supplement their readings at home with that. Um, what we're going to show you today is a one minute. He also has a, a, a YouTube setup of one minute per each of the 33 days. So this will be our one minute message to kick it off from Father Donald Calloway who wrote the book. Hi everyone, I'm Father Donald Calloway, the vocation director for the Marian Fathers of the Immaculate Conception and author of the book, Consecration to St. Joseph, the wonders of our spiritual father. Today, we start a 33-day preparation for total consecration to St. Joseph. At a time when there is great confusion in the world, especially regarding marriage and family, we need St. Joseph and his spiritual fatherhood more than ever. St. Peter Julian Imard once said, when God wishes to raise a soul to greater heights, he unites it to St. Joseph by giving it a strong love for the good saint. Are you ready to ascend to greater heights in the spiritual life? Join me for the next 33 days as we learn about the wonders of St. Joseph and consecrate ourselves to his spiritual fatherhood. My friends, let's go to St. Joseph. Get your copy of Consecration to St. Joseph, The Wonders of Our Spiritual Father at EWTNRC.com. So the good news today is um, your reading assignments will all be done during this meeting. So if you're watching online or if you're here present before us, um, everything will be completed today. And tomorrow you'll start on, on your own. But if you're um, joining us on the live YouTube, each day we will read um, the two-page reading that goes through the litany of St. Joseph over the 33 days and then the extended reading. Um, but today we're going to do um, the readings for day one in both English and Spanish. Um, we're going to have our parishioners participate um, throughout this 33 days, and they will join in doing the readings. So um, Soledad Garcia, if you could come up, we'll have you go ahead, and um, she'll briefly introduce herself and give a, a little short introduction about herself, and then we'll start in on pages 13 and 14 if you want to follow along with um, her in your book. Good evening, everyone. My name is Soledad Garcia, and I've been a parishioner here at St. Anthony of Padua for the past 16 years. And today I would like to share a very brief um, a snippet of, of how I became to entrust my life to St. Joseph. Um, and this dates back to when I was seven years old. At that time, my family and I were living in a very small town in Durango, Mexico. Um, in the High Sierras of Durango, Mexico. So our parish, our patron saint for, the par uh, for our parish was the Holy Family. Um, I remember I had uh, made my first communion in April, and April 10th is my birthday. Uh, my, my first communion was just a few days prior to that. And come May, mid-May, my father passes away suddenly, unexpectedly, and I'm left behind without a father. And I remember praying at church at that time, 
and um, looking at the beautiful statue of our Holy Family. And I remember my attention being drawn to St. Joseph in particular because he um, had his arm extended towards Our Lady and our child Jesus in a very loving manner. And I had just lost my dad and I missed him so bad. And I remember asking St. Joseph, St. Joseph, can you please be my spiritual father? I need him so much. I didn't know how to grieve. I was only seven years old. So from that point on, I uh, remember St. Joseph always feeling him, always in my life, especially in trying times, difficult times. I felt his protective, comforting hand next to me. And I know that he has always looked after me, after my family and friends, and he will never and has never left me. So I would like to encourage each and every one of you tonight to tr entrust yourself to St. Joseph, to consecrate yourself to him. I didn't know what consecration meant up until a few days ago, to be honest with you. And looking back, I think that's exactly what I did when I was seven years old. I commended myself entrusted myself to our loving spiritual father, and I extend an invitation to the, to, for each and every one of you to do the same tonight. This is the perfect time at the start of those, these uh, 33 days, this journey. We don't know what will happen, but I'm anticipating beautiful and wonderful things will happen to each and every one of us. So with that, we will um, read pages 13 and 14 from our books. Day one, why consecration to St. Joseph? When God wishes to raise the soul to greater heights, he unites it to St. Joseph by giving it a strong love for the good saint. These are word, words of, of St. Peter Julian Emard. Do you want to ascend to greater heights in the spiritual life? Consecration to St. Joseph will take you there. Many Christians have consecrated themselves to the Virgin Mary so as to be more closely united to Jesus. Without a doubt, consecration to Mary is one of the best things you can do for your spiritual life. The essence of Marian consecration is to help you become another Mary. For Jesus, a faithful, loving, and trusting companion of the Savior. Consecration to St. Joseph does something similar. Consecration to St. Joseph will help you become another Joseph for Jesus and Mary. That is, entrusting yourself entirely to St. Joseph helps you become a faithful, loving, and trusting companion of Jesus and Mary. In the New Testament, we read that Jesus increased in wisdom and in stature and in favor with God and man, Luke 2.52, under the watchful care of his parents. Such an increase can happen to you, too, if you entrust yourself to the paternal care of St. Joseph. St. Bernard of Clairvieux explains how it works. He writes, who in what manner of man this blessed Joseph was? You may conjecture from the name by which, a dispensation being allowed, he deserved to be so honored as to be believed and to be called the Father of God. You may conjecture it from his very name, which being interpreted means increase. Saint Joseph is the increaser. He has paternal love for you and the power to increase the presence of God in your life and take you to greater heights in the spiritual life. For centuries, this secret of St. Joseph lay hidden. Saints, mystics, and a handful of popes knew of it. Now it is your turn to discover it. Now is the time of St. Joseph. The church and the world greatly need St. Joseph. We need him to help us return to the love of Jesus and to living lives of virtue. We desperately need St. Joseph's protection as well. The family, the foundation of society, is under attack. The family of God, the Catholic Church, is also undergoing vicious assaults from the world, the flesh, the devil, and some of her own children. We need St. Joseph to protect us. He is our loving and merciful spiritual father, holy, strong, and ready to help. He is forever linked to Jesus, Mary, and the Church. He protected the Holy Family, he will protect us too if we entrust ourselves to his paternal heart and his spiritual care. St. Joseph is your spiritual father. All children resemble their parents 
you are a child of Saint Joseph. You need to resemble him, especially by imitating his virtues and faithfulness to Jesus and Mary. Saint Joseph plays a vital, life-giving role in your spiritual growth and well-being. This is the heart of consecration of Saint Joseph. Blessed William Joseph Chaminade explains it well. He states, he, Saint Joseph, was not a passive instrument in the great work of our salvation. He played a very active role, and that is why he was included in the merciful counsels of the incarnate wisdom. The merciful love of God has given Saint Joseph to you as a spiritual father. Are you ready to ascend to greater heights in the spiritual life? Are you ready to draw nearer to Jesus and Mary and experience an increase in virtue? Let's go to Saint Joseph. We are going to consecrate ourselves to Saint Joseph. We shall place at his feet all that we are and all that we have. And these are words of Saint Peter Julian Emart. Thank you, Soledad, for that beautiful, touching story. How amazing God works, um, even when we don't know what a consecration is. The innocence of a seven-year-old child can feel um, St. Joseph's tender care and draw, draw us under his paternal mantle, our paternal care. Um, next, what we're going to do is we're going to have the same reading, pages 13 and 14, in Spanish. Martha Sanchez is here with us. And she's going to give us um, some words in um, Spanish and then do that reading, pages 13 and 14, in Spanish. Buenas noches. Yo vengo de Guadalajara, Jalisco. Y pues um, me toca compartir a ustedes que en el seminario de Guadalajara, Uh, San José es el patrono y yo lo he admirado toda mi vida porque su humildad y su silencio me ha impresionado mucho. Ahora voy a empezar a leer el primer día de la consagración. ¿Por qué consagrarse a San José? Cuando, cuando Dios desea elevar a una alma mayor, a mayores alturas, la une a San José, dándole un gran amor por el buen santo. ¿Quieres ascender a mayores alturas en la vida espiritual? La consagración a San José lo logrará. Muchos cristianos se han consagrado a la Santísima Virgen María, para unirse más a Jesús. Sin duda, la consagración a María es una de las mejores cosas que puedes hacer por tu vida espiritual. Lo esencial de la consagración mariana es que te ayuda a convertirte en otra María, porque para Jesús, es decir, en una compañía fiel, amorosa y confiable del Salvador, la consagración a San José tiene un efecto similar. La consagración a San José te ayudará a convertirte en otro José para Jesús y María. Es decir, cuando te entregas totalmente a San José, te conviertes en una compañía fiel, amorosa y confiable de Jesús y María. En el Nuevo Testamento leemos que Jesús iba creciendo en sabiduría, en estatura y en gracia delante de Dios y de los hombres. Lucas 2, 52. Bajo el atento cuidado de sus padres, ese crecimiento puede también suceder si se te encomienda al cuidado paternal de San José. San Bernardo de Claraval explica en qué consiste esto. ¿Quién y qué clase de hombre fue este bendito José? Que por su nombre se puede deducir que, excepcionalmente, mereció ser tan honrado 
que se lo reconoció y llamó el Padre de Dios. Esto se puede inferir de su propio nombre, cuyo significado es el que hace crecer. San José es, pues, el que hace crecer. No solo te ama paternalmente, sino que tiene el poder de hacer crecer la presencia de Dios en tu vida y elevarte a mayores alturas en tu vida espiritual. Durante siglos, este secreto de San José estuvo oculto, aunque los santos, los místicos y un puñado de papas lo sabían, ahora te toca a ti descubrirlo. Ahora es el tiempo de San José. La Iglesia y el mundo tienen una gran necesidad de San José. Lo necesitamos para que nos ayude. A regresar al amor de Jesús y para llevar una vida llena de virtudes. Asimismo, necesitamos desesperadamente la protección de San José. La familia, que es el fundamento de la sociedad, se encuentra bajo ataque. La familia de Dios, la Iglesia, también sufre ataques violentos del mundo, de la carne, del demonio y de algunos de sus propios hijos. Necesitamos que San José nos proteja. Él es nuestro amoroso y misericordioso Padre espiritual. Un hombre santo y fuerte, siempre dispuesto a ayudar. San José está unido eternamente a Jesús, a María y a la Iglesia. Así como protegió a la Sagrada Familia, nos protegerá a nosotros siempre que nos encomendemos a su corazón paternal y a sus cuidados espirituales. San José es tu padre espiritual. Todos los hijos se parecen a sus padres. Y si tú eres hijo de San José, Tienes que parecerte a Él, especialmente por la imitación de sus virtudes y por su fidelidad a Jesús y María. San José cumple un rol vital, dador de vida, en nuestro crecimiento espiritual y nuestro bienestar. Esta es la esencia de la consagración a San José. El Beato Guillermo José Chaminade lo explica muy bien y afirma, San José no fue un instrumento pasivo en la gran obra de nuestra salvación. Cumplió un rol muy activo y por este motivo fue parte de los consejos misericordiosos de la sabiduría encarnada. El amor misericordioso de Dios te dio a San José para que sea tu padre espiritual. ¿Estás listo para ascender a mayores alturas en la vida espiritual? ¿Estás preparado para acercarte más a Jesús y a María para vivir y crecer en la virtud? Entonces, a buscar a José. Nos vamos a consagrar a San José. Pondremos a sus pies todo lo que somos y todo lo que tenemos. Gracias. I don't know much, but I know gracias. <laughs> okay, thank you, Martha. Um, what we're going to have next is Father Cam will be um, joining us here now to um, do the actual homework assignment. So each day when we do that two-page reading, it'll um, say at the bottom of it to go to a page in the book to do an in-depth reading. Today's, um, after day one, you'll see it says, go pray the Veni Sancte Spiritus on page 247. So Father will go ahead and do that for us and then give us a, a little teaching here. And then we'll um, go on from there. So, so go ahead, Father Cam. Thank you. Good afternoon to you, my brothers and sisters in Christ. And it's been a wonderful journey so far. 
We are going to open to page 247 and we're going to say this prayer together. If you have it in Spanish, you can say it in Spanish. If you have it in English, you can say it in English. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Come, Holy Spirit, send down those beams which sweetly flow in silent streams. Flow thy bright throne above. O come, thou Father of the poor. O come, thou source of all our store. Come, fill our hearts with love. O thou of comforters the best. O thou the source delightful guest. The pilgrim's sweet relief. Rest art thou in our toil, most sweet. Refreshment in the noonday heat and solace in our grief. O blessed light of life thou art, fill with a light the inmost heart of those who hope in thee. Without thy Godhead nothing can have any price or worth in man. Nothing can harmless be. Lord, wash our sinful stains away. Refresh from heaven our barren clay. Our wounds and bruises heal. To thy sweet yoke our sick next bow, bow. Warm with thy fire our house of snow. Our wandering feet recall. Grant to thy faithful dearest Lord, whose only hope is thy sure word. The sevenfold gifts of grace. Grant us in life thy grace that we in peace may die and ever be in joy before thy face. Amen. Alleluia. Let us close our eyes in a minute of silence. A sister told us that even at the age of seven, she made a child pr prayer, prayer that could be considered very childish, but yet that was a consecration because it came from the heart, the pure heart of a child. At this moment of silence, I want you to truly dedicate your life to God. Ask St. Joseph for this moment to come into your heart and lead you through this journey. Loving God, even as we gather here this afternoon, we completely depend on your grace. And we pray that as it has pleased you to choose St. Joseph for us, the way you chose him to take care of your beloved son, we now pray that you fill each and every one of us here and all those who are watching us online with the grace from above that through the intercession of this great father of faith, through his paternal care, we may grow from strength to strength in loving you, in serving you, and so that at the end of our various lives, we will rejoice with you and all the saints in heaven. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. My dearest friends in Christ, I'm going to give you a very short reflection, and this is entitled, A Privileged Journey with St. Joseph. In other words, why this journey? Why do we have to make it? I call it a privileged journey because it is indeed a privilege to be called by God to journey with this great saint. He who generously accepted to make the earthly journey with Jesus, Joseph generously accepted. In other words, he was never compelled. So the same man certainly stands at a better place to journey with us. He generously accepted. God chose him. The Gospel of John chapter 15 verse 16, the word of God says, You did not choose me, I chose you. God chose him, but he generously accepted to make that journey. Remember, it was not St. Joseph choosing us. It was God choosing us 
and choosing St. Joseph for us. The moment when God said to him through the angel in the Gospel of Matthew chapter 1, verse 20, do not be afraid to take Mary your wife. That very solemn expression means, means a lot to all of us. The moment Joseph courageously took Mary, Mary became the mother of Jesus and established a holy family. He also took all of us who becomes sons and daughters of Mary, who becomes children of Jesus. So within these 33 days, we are privileged to be cared for by St. Joseph and through him to get to Jesus more personally. And it's very important for us to always remember that St. Joseph is a necessary means. He is not the end. The end is Jesus. St. Joseph is a necessary means, just like our Blessed Mother Mary, to take us to Jesus. And we are following the means that God himself found worthy. God himself found worthy. And so we can't make mistake about this. Through St. Joseph, we will come to Jesus. Remember again that Apart from God in heaven, St. Joseph is the only human being, is the only being, in fact, that Jesus can call Father. Apart from God, the Almighty God, St. Joseph is the only being that Jesus can call Father. Could you imagine that when Jesus says, my daddy? That's what he says to Joseph, my daddy. So what an honor. It's a special thing that all of us have the privilege to be the same. So this evening, I want to look at a few items on why this consecration. Why is it important? Why is the consecration to St. Joseph? Like I've said earlier, it's not the end. Our goal is not to get to worship Joseph. Our goal is through Joseph to get to worship Jesus, to get to know him. Because, number one, we want to know God, we want to follow him, and we want to do his will. That is why we are doing it. If you want to do something very well, you want to model your life upon those who have done it before. So the very essence of this is we want to know to follow and do God's will. In the Gospel of Luke chapter 22, verse 42, Jesus says, Not my will, but let your will be done. Let your will be done. Because in the will of God is our peace. Experience has shown that as fascinating and as wonderful as our human wills can be, sometimes they are not actually the will of God. So we need to discern that you have good intention, you want to do something good, may not necessarily be the will of God. Joseph had a beautiful will originally. He wanted to marry Mary, which was a beautiful thing, but that was not the will of God. He wanted to marry Mary as a wife, in a cultural way to raise children, but God's will was different. Mary will still be your wife, but not the way you think about it. And so, Joseph will teach us how to do God's will. How to tread our will for God's will. It's not easy. So it is very important, Joseph heroically, I want to use the word heroically, treaded his own will for God's which is a manifestation of faith. The book of Isaiah chapter 55 verse 8 tells us, my, my thoughts are not your thoughts. My ways are not your thought, ways. So if we have to really, you know, in the whole perfect, fascinating intention, we ask St. Joseph, is this what God wants me to do? I want to serve God in this way. Is that what God wants me to do? And then he will guide us because he's been there. He knew what it means to have a beautiful plan and to adjust it and leave it and do something else. So the first intention of this consecration is because we want to do God's will. We don't want to make mistakes. The second, which is linked to it, is we want to act knowingly. We want to understand God's message because it is connected the, the tool to doing God's will lies on understanding that will. How do we hear God's message? In the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 1, verse 20, the Bible told us, the angel spoke to Joseph and said to him, do not be afraid 
to take Mary as your wife. So Joseph had a message. In a world that is filled with all kinds of confusion, we want to be sure of what we are hearing. Of course, Joseph has so many dreams, but he was able to distinguish that this particular dream is not ordinary. This is not ordinary. This is from God. The Bible said he woke up, listened to the voice of the angel, and took Mary in. So we want to hear God's word. We don't want to hear the politicians only. We don't want to hear motivational speakers only. We want to hear from God directly. That is very important. So if we want to hear God's message, the undiluted word of God, we ask Joseph to teach us how. How did you discern the dream to know that this is from God? That is exactly. So it is in hearing this message that eventually we are able to do God's will. This is very important. It's very important. The third reason why we are having this is, number one, we want to act honorably and we want to treat others respectfully. To be men and women of integrity. In the Gospel of Matthew, again, chapter 1, verse 19, the Word of God says, because Joseph, her husband, was a righteous man. The Word of God tells us, blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness. He was a righteous man, and when he found out that Mary was pregnant, he did not want to embarrass her. He did not want to expose her. He wanted to treat her honorably. You want to do that? We live in a world today where people delight in the faults of other people, whether perceived or real. We celebrate the failure of other people. We make it into a gist. We talk about it. We gossip about it. So Joseph is going to teach us how to treat people, especially the weak ones, with honor and integrity. He's going to do that to us. So he wanted to respect Mary, to spare her publicity. We want to be men and women of integrity. The third reason is we wish to cultivate faithfulness, chastity, and prudence. We want to cultivate it. Everything in the world has been sexualized. So we want to return to the original plan of God. The perpetual virginity of Mary was preserved because Joseph had the capacity to be chaste and faithful. Mary didn't feel threatened. She didn't feel threatened in the house. In case if you forget, Joseph had no intimacy with Mary. I hope you know that. Mary was a virgin before, during, and after birth. Ever virgin. But that was not the original plan of Joseph. But she had to, he had to accept that because of God's will. Say, God, if that is your will, I will go through it. You think it was easy for him? It wasn't easy, but he was able to control himself. He was able to hold himself together. So we want to be faithful. We want to be chaste. If you look around, you see what is happening in our world today. A lot of marriages have been broken because of promiscuity and unfaithfulness and all kinds of things. We want to return to that dignity. And only Joseph can teach us how. How to stay with a woman and look at her as a dignified human being, not an object, not something to be abused. Joseph only can teach us that. So we want to be that. We want to be that. We want to learn perseverance, dutifulness, commitment to family values. So you can see in this book, a lot has been a lot of reference has been made to the problems facing families today. Families are the best of human gifts. And that is why the enemy is trying everything he can to destroy family. There is a systemic attack on family. In so many, in so many areas, you know, we have used so many words, you know, to politicize it. But all this goes down to, to destroying the fabric of the family. We even destroy the original concept of family, the original concept of marriage. All this is an attack on the family system. 
We're trying to destroy all that. We began to define it in so many ways that suits our own emotions and sentiments. Only Joseph can pray for us at this moment. There is effort to redefine family and to deny it of, of its divine origin. Sister, Saint, uh, okay, it's not yet a saint. Sister Lucia, the, one of the ladies that, uh, one of the children that our lady visited, Lucia dos Santos, she said this very profoundly. She says that the final battle between the Lord and the kingdom of Satan will be about marriage and the family. And you don't have to look far to know what is happening today. today. So we need St. Joseph to intercede for us again, to go back to the original intention of God about family. Joseph was a clear example of perseverance, dutifulness, commitment to family values. Joseph was always there for Mary. From day one, don't forget, she was actually the nurse that delivered Mary of, G of Jesus. I hope you know that. That when Jesus, when Mary was to give birth to Jesus, there was no other person with her except Joseph. So she was like the midwife who delivered her wife. She didn't know how to do it, but she has to do it. Instinctively, she has to, he has to do it. So he was there from the very moment of the birth of Jesus. Joseph protected Mary and Jesus from Herod. He was a protector, a defender. He had to travel all the way to Egypt to safeguard the child Jesus to protect his mother. Joseph was there. Joseph had to go take four days journey back to the temple when Jesus was 12 years, years old and, and got missing. Joseph came back with the mother looking for the child. And this was the last time we heard of him in the scripture. Presumably he died early, but this was the last time. So Joseph was always there for the family. He was always there. He was not a dad who stays in a, in a wherever, in New York and he's seen his family on video only. No, he was always there. He knew what was happening. He knew what was going on. He took care to protect the family. He was always there. So we, we, we need a model, a model of that, that, that protection, that love, that care, that sacrifice. We need it today. He didn't say, what is in it for me? He knew very well that this child is not his biological child. But there was no single day he treated Jesus like a stranger. It took him like his own personal son. He was there. He was there. And so, if Jesus the Lord, the creator of the heavens and the earth, remember, this is one thing that is very mysterious. It was Jesus himself who created both Joseph and Mary. I hope you know that, because Jesus is God. So Jesus himself chose them, he actually picked them to be his own parents. He did that. That is the mystery of this. He created them and he designed them and he picked them to be his own parents. If he can entrust his vulnerability to, to, to their care, if he can entrust his innocence to them, if he can entrust himself to them, then we are only privileged. That's why he said it's a privileged journey. We are only privileged to entrust ourselves to St. Joseph. In the words of Pope John XXIII, he said, God desires devotion to St. Joseph to search forth in the form of trusting abandonment. And that is what consecration is. Trusting abandonment to St. Joseph. So we can tell that if we can do this very faithfully, very committedly with all our heart, we will end these 33 days being a completely transformed human beings. Because St. Joseph will teach us how to do it. He will be there with us through his intercession. He will be able to guide us to be able to be exactly what God wants us to be. So once again, my brothers and sisters, let us put our faith in what we are doing and let us do it with all our heart. There is no doubt that St. Joseph will be with us all through. And may God bless his words in our heart. Amen. Our last speaker of the night will be Nancy Sanchez, and today is her 35th birthday. So we're so excited to have her here with us tonight. 
but she went through the consecration one time and is going to give us a brief testimony of what you have to look forward to on the other side, what she has learned. So we'll let her do that, and then we'll close out with the litany of um, St. Joseph, and our evening will be ending. Good evening, everyone. Sharna, you're amazing. Thank you for having me here, and I feel honored to be part of it. So my journey began last year. Sharna told me about the book as soon as it came out. She was announcing it to all of us, her friends and people that she's close to. And she's like, I'm gonna start the consecration. I'm so excited. And so I was really happy she shared it with me. And so I'm gonna just give you a little small, I won't be long because I know everyone's tired, but just a little bit of how it, how it changed my life and how I'm so happy I did it and I'm really excited to do it again. So. I was really, my intention was to offer it for my husband. Um, I had been having like problems with him, not really bad marital problems, but he was falling short as well as I do, of course. And I really wanted him to grow spiritually because if I knew that he got close to the Lord, I knew if he was in love with the Lord um, more, uh, everything would fall in place. He'd be a better husband, he'd be a better father, um, he would care for us better. So I said, this would be a great opportunity to do something and offer it for my husband's spiritual growth. And so I, I started doing it with that intention and I actually picked to end. It was kind of a coincidence, but I think it was just God, God doing it, was to end May 1st, which is St. Joseph the Worker. And I really liked that, the St. Joseph the Worker, because my husband is a horse trainer and he also has worked in construction and so he's like more of like a manly type person and so I was like that's great it totally works for him I'm so excited to do it for him so I started doing it I started learning about more about St. Joseph and it uh, comes to know that it already it started changing me as well I didn't really think about that but I'm really happy that I did this consecration I feel like the roles of um, the husband and wife these days can be overlapping now. I feel we've lost a lot of um, the male role figure as the husband and father and the mother being more submissive to the husband, not in a bad way, but in a loving way. And I feel like sometimes us women can try to do too much. We're working now, we're taking care of our kids, and it can be a very heavy burden. I was still working at the time. So I just felt like this bird, I have five little kids um, working. Uh, my husband likes to have warm meals, so trying to keep the house nice and tidy and cooking for him all the time. So um, it was just a lot on me. So I, I learned through this consecration, um, what I took from it was basically giving that burden and saying, there's roles that are for the male, there's roles that are for the, for the husband, and there's roles that are for uh, the mother and the wife. And we shouldn't have to take on so much. We, should, we shouldn't try to control everything. We need to surrender. And so that's what I learned. I learned to surrender, giving in to my husband and saying, he's the leader. God chose uh, the males, the husbands, to be the head of the family. And I shouldn't have to worry about so much about my children's spiritual growth. Is he there for them? I need to just pray for him. And praying for him, he'd bring, come closer to the Lord, and coming closer to the Lord, he would grow, and he'd have more communication with the Lord in order to take our family um, in, in a way of holiness. That's what I really wanted. And so it really relieved a burden off me. Instead of trying to like control everything, I was able to just kind of say, Lord Jesus, I trust in you. I trust that um, you will help Salvador be a good father. You will help Salvador love me and give his life for me because that's what um, husbands do. They, they should love their wives so much that they will lay down their lives for them. And so help me to surrender that to you and know that you through my husband will, will guide us. And he did. He grew. I grew. And we're still growing. <laughs> we're not saints. Um, but I really have seen over the year, my husband has come closer to the Lord. He has opened his heart a lot. He even was willing to do the commercial, which he's really shy. 
And I was really surprised that he did it, but he did. He's just being more open and he's leading our rosaries now when we do our family rosaries. He's wanting to lead when before I was usually the one leading, now he's the one leading. And it's just been amazing. He's, he's changed our life so much. And I, I think St. Joseph, I think Sharna, I think obviously Jesus is the one doing all the work, but it's so great to have this support system. We have support system with all of us here. We're friends and we're sisters and brothers in Christ and we support each other and that role has been Sharna. Um, and of course my family, my mother-in-law. And then we also have help of the saints and it's so great that they're there for us to guide us, to, um, to help us in, in what they know and, and what they've already gone through. So that was basically my take and I, I hope that you guys also take out of this, I know you will. Just open your hearts to the Lord and say, Jesus, I trust in you constantly and, and you're gonna see things change just as I did. Thank you. Thank you, Nancy. You look beautiful at 35. <laughs> Nancy is a great um, parishioner here. She's at daily mass often with her five children, her beautiful children. We met in a cute way. I actually um, wanted to, I, I didn't know her at all, but I wanted to bring her a meal. So I actually showed up at her house and gave her a meal. That was how we first met. And we've become great friends. And I thought I was doing a good deed to her, but how God always works, he turned it on me. And when I was going through the next round of my cancer, when it returned to my bones, she has watched my son for me. I can't even count the number of times while I had to go to a doctor appointment. So, Whenever you do anything for anyone, God flips it around and does way more back for you. So we've seen that through and through. We're going to close out this evening with the Litany of St. Joseph. And then we will continue each weekday and weekend Mass with the two-page reading in English and Spanish. And we'll be back here again um, next Thursday for our Day 8 weekly meeting. But we'll go ahead and have Sarah Hallis um, close us out with the Litany of St. Joseph. So if you want to open up to that page, and then we'll complete our meeting. Thank you all for attending tonight. And the litany of St. Joseph can be found on page 233, and the words will also be on the screen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, hear us. Christ, graciously hear us. God, the Father of heaven, have mercy on us. God, the Son, Redeemer of the world, have mercy on us. God, the Holy Spirit, have mercy on us. Trinity, one God, have mercy on us. Holy Mary, pray for us. Saint Joseph, pray for us. Noble offspring of David, pray for us. Light of patriarchs, pray for us. Spouse of the Mother of God, Pray for us. Chaste guardian of the Virgin, pray for us. Foster father of the Son of God, pray for us. Zealous defender of Christ, pray for us. Head of the Holy Family, pray for us. Joseph most just, pray for us. Joseph most chaste, pray for us. Joseph most prudent, pray for us. Joseph most courageous, pray for us. Joseph most obedient, pray for us. Joseph most faithful, 
providence chose blessed Joseph to be the spouse of your most holy mother grant us the favor of having him for our intercessor in heaven whom on earth we venerate as our protector you who live and reign forever and ever amen
Mm -hmm. I think I'll do this by the map. It's the clock map that he's done because I don't know what we're going to do. I might have to lecture unless you want to lecture. It doesn't matter. You know what Dave told me? <laughs> Come here. Dave's, Dave told me. He's a him. I can't remember his last name. Does he go here anymore? Yeah. You know, he used to be your sacristan for the 630 Mass. Oh, Dave Nassus. Yeah, whatever his last name is. Okay, he's you not know, here anymore. Huh? He's not coming back. He told me he was. When did he say that? Like last weekend. I'm going to have to ask him because he said, take me off the thing. And I said, okay. First he said, put me back on. I said, okay. And then he says, no. He doesn't have his key. But he said, and he asked me if I was going to be here. I said, well, yeah, Father Bob asked me to do the six. Asked me to the sacristy. I'm like, okay, yeah, no problem. He's like, are you sure? I got to get up at 3 o'clock in the morning anyway, so it doesn't really matter. He's like, why so early? I said, you know, I like to start my day with God before I go to work. I have a tendency to need it. <laughs> well, I'm going to have to ask him if he's coming back because um, there's no lecture for tomorrow. I mean, what does that say? Four, five, nine. Mm -hmm. Oh. We'll have the. You know what? Well, tomorrow is 8 30 a.m. I mean, no, wait a minute. It's, it's adoration all day, right. but I just want to make sure everything is ready for tomorrow, okay? That's ready.